Hi, I'm Saji John from Bergenfield, New Jersey, and this is the Rosie O'Donnell Show. On today's show, Juliana Margulies, yodeling grandma Ida May, and Steve Harris. Hit it, John! <laughs> Saji John. Hi, Rosie. How are, How are you? you? Good. Saji, what kind of name is that? Indian. It's a beautiful name. I've Thank never heard you. it before. How do you spell it? S H A J I. The H well, is silent. It is. Yes. Rosie. R H O S I E. <laughs> you can just interject letters anytime you Any want. Any H you want, just make it silent. <laughs> yeah. Well, nice to meet you. How are you doing? Good. What do you do for a living? I'm an accountant, and I have a little baby that's 17 months old. Congratulations. Thank you. 17 Thank you. months old. Yes. Boy yes. or girl? Boy. Justin Tito. Is he talking a lot? All the time. He knows his A to, a to Z. He, he knows, knows a, to Z? a to Z. His whole alphabet. <laughs> and he's 17 months old? Yeah, the whole thing. He knows from 1 to 10. He's real smart. He knows, I'm not lying. Wait a minute. He knows 26 letters. ABC knows the whole alphabet? Whole, and even now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? <laughs> he knows oh, the whole I'm thing. a little competitively jealous of that. <laughs> When's the baby's birthday? November 3rd. November? Yes, he'll be two in November. My daughter will be two in September. And she's not anywhere near the ABC. Yes, yes. But you know the what she does? She talks incessantly. The car ride home from my sister's this weekend, uh -huh. my son falls asleep, so she's in the car seat next to him. Right. And I'm like going, child, shh, he's sleeping. She goes, mommy, car, home, Parker, <laughs> sleeping, bird, trees, car, house, mommy, dog, oh. Easter, <laughs> Funny, hopping, hopping, <laughs> quiet, quiet, mommy yelling, mommy yelling, yelling, Chelsea, quiet, mommy screaming, screaming. I and couldn't get her to shut up. And then Parker wakes up? He didn't wake up at all. He's in a coma in the back. He couldn't even get up. He's, you know, babies, you can, like, you, can, you find this, you can pick them up out of the car seat and they don't even wake up. Not at all. That's the best way to put them to sleep. You know what he says to him? Block. He goes to sleep with the light on, and then and I go to check him, and I put the light off, and in the morning he's like, it happened again. <laughs> <laughs> Something happens in my womb, and the night the light goes out. <laughs> and I say, Mommy comes in and turns the light out. No way, I would wake up if you come in. <laughs> I go, sometimes I come in and I pick you up and I move you to the right direction on your bed. Don't tell me a lie, Mommy! <laughs> I don't know why I'm sitting chatting with you when I have a whole show to do. Yeah. But it was fun, point. Saji. It was, yes. and you did a great job. Thank you very much. Kiss your I'm very talented, here. smart baby for me. I will. <laughs> don't have a play date at my house. I'll feel inferior. <laughs> Say hello to John McDay. Let me see you out there. Good. How are you? I'm wonderful. Lovely to see you. Lovely to see you. Take a look at this desk. It's pretty cr pretty cool. You know the artist Charles Fazina? I don't know what you said. It's pretty cruel. Pretty, cr pretty, cr pretty cruel. No, pretty it's cool. It's cool. It's not cruel it's at not all. It's not cruel at all. It's not kind. Not a bit. <laughs> There's a wonderful artist Charles Fazino, and for in fact, in first. See you. It's, it's oh no, it's catching. catching. <laughs> uh, when I first uh, had had a little bit of money when I was on Star Search, you know, uh -huh. I won like eight thousand dollars. Yep. I bought a piece of his artwork at the mall. Oh yeah. One of those art stores at the mall, you right. know? And uh, he's a wonderful artist, and since then I've come to know him, and very generous, always makes special pieces for different charity events that we do. Uh -huh. He called and asked if he could design a desk, and boy, did he ever get a wow. close-up of that. It's, it's a wonderful 3D kind of art thing. It's um, all Broadway shows, and, and it's, it's gorgeous, and I just want to thank him so much. Charles uh, Fazzino is a wonderful artist. Well, how are you? 
John McDee. Good, good. Had a nice, relaxing weekend. Did you have a good weekend? Really good. What'd you do? Yeah. Well, I had just just chilled out. I cleaned out the garage, did some stuff. Got back early, back to Manhattan uh, last night for the big opening of Marlena, new show, and uh, the got what? all Marlena, the new show. It opened. Well, it was. I thought it was opening. I got all dressed up. I got to the theater, and it was totally shut tight. It was not last night. It's next Yeah, Sunday. it's next weekend. What I are you talking so, about? I can't believe I did that on Easter. Can you believe I did I'm that? I'm going to that. You are? Next Sunday. Well, good. I'll see you there. And you were like I'm a dork in front of the closed theater? Big loser. I hope nobody saw me. With your so tuxedo? Yes. Did you knock on the to door? No, it was all closed. I was so embarrassed. I would give good money if someone has a video of that. <laughs> There's a little hole in my hair right here. You can see what? through to the background. Oh, Look, see that? It's true. There's a little hole in my hair. Let me fix that. Where the cr oh, yeah, my hair is getting too long and out of control. Oh, I got to do something. <laughs> getting a crew cut for the summer. Oh, boy. Oh, I'm boy. Um, well, so, I, had, I had a great weekend. Yeah, you did? Yeah. Yes? I uh, didn't go to any theaters on the wrong day. I went to the theater <laughs> on the right day, Thursday you did? night. Yeah. Yes, uh, we had pre-taped Friday show, so I didn't get to chat about it. But I saw the new Tongue of a Bird. Oh yeah. Cherry Jones and yeah. Sharon Lawrence from NYPD Blue. Wonderful right. play down at the Public Theater. We're gonna have both of those actresses on. Oh cool. Um, you, you love her work, don't you? Very much. Cherry Jones, brilliant, brilliant Amazing. actress. Yeah, truly. Tony Award winner. Yeah. And she was just great. It made me cry. Ooh. Story of a mother and a daughter, and mm -hmm. two mothers and daughters, one who's missing and. Actually, two who are missing. I don't want to give it away. But anyway, okay. it's, uh, oh, it made me cry at the end. It was really great. Oh, nice. uh, it's at the Public Theater, as I said, and we're going to have both of those women on. John, do I look any different uh, to you today? Like, how? Well, what do you mean? I don't know. Just take a good look at me. See if you notice anything. Well, not, anything re different? not really. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? No, I played like golf this weekend. You did? I played you, golf. You really did. Proving that people change. Yes. How was As it? As you all know, I have loathed golf for many a year. Right. I have some friends who are very avid golfers, and they're like, Saturday morning, come on, let's just go hit some of the driving range. And I was like, whatever. <laughs> and I went to the driving range, and I hit them. And I want to tell you something. When you hit that ball, it's kind of exhilarating, and it goes like 200 yards. You're wow. like, whoa! But you're not allowed to scream is what I learned. Really? You were not allowed to <laughs> scream on the golf course. Oh, you can't. <laughs> like my friend, she hit one, and I was like, Holy! You know, because yeah, like, right. I couldn't believe you could hit it that far. And right. when you're watching on TV, it looks like big whoops. So what? Uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. trying to hit that ball, it ain't easy. You know. Wow. I hit like three perfect in a row, like 200 yards. Yeah. With my three wedge or whatever. <laughs> I don't Your know. Three wedge. My three. It's number three. They're okay. numbered. It makes it easy. It's like right. paint by number. Oh, that's Golf good. by number. I picked up my number three. Those. Remember we had the woman coach here. That she, woman that's... teach. She gave me those yep. Callaway clubs. Yeah. Finally used them. Okay. Used my number three. Hit it. And like three in a row, perfect. And then I'm getting cocky. I'm like, take a look at this. Three inches. <laughs> That's all you get, you know? And here's wow. the next thing. My back is killing me. Is it? Because you don't even think it's a workout. You know what I mean? Because it doesn't look like a workout. But I have to tell you, it's really hurting me wow. today. So, and I'm too much Let's of a baseball see. player. Because you know when you play baseball, you step in. You take mm -hmm. that little step. You're not allowed to do that in golf. I'm like stepping in, trying to muscle the ball. But now I'm going to become a golfer. Isn't that going to be fun for America? Wow. How annoying. <laughs> Tell you all about my little golf escapades. That's right. I felt like such a nerd, too, on the golf course. <laughs> and I'm extra friendly to all the other people. Hi, how are you? It's my first day. <laughs> <laughs> Using my three club. These are my friends. They're good. But not me. I just learned. Oh. Guys were like, yeah, great to see you. Uh, but it was fun. Um, cool. That's great. I also went back on my workout. You know, I had a little period of um, sort of not doing it. Right. I had about a two-week period of... Why the hell did I ever say this Chub Club thing? Because I got a little thrown by having to run the 5K. And it's really depressing if you watch TV at night. Cleopatra is coming on ABC, yep. May 23rd. Do you know why that's frightening? That's the day of our 5K run. It means it is close enough to start the promotion the prom on TV now. Right. Which means I better get my ass in gear. Do you know coming what I'm up, saying? That's right. It's <laughs> It's around the corner. It is. But I was really stressing myself out thinking I had to run it. So here's the new thing. You can walk or run it. And oh. if you walk it, it is still succeeding. Because that's why I quit. I'm like, I can't do it. And I was like crying and everything. I can't say I cry because people make too much of it. But I was crying. You know, I was like really depressed about it. So now you can walk or run. Or which both. has given me the impetus to run more. Mm -hmm. Good. My brain is really miswired. Is do you know it? what I mean? I don't know. What do you mean? It's like when somebody said, you don't have to run, now I'm running. Oh, right. It's well. I just don't like anyone telling me what to do. Yes, I think exactly. that's what it is. <laughs> I just itched my head for no reason. Okay, did you see <laughs> The Sopranos last night? No, I didn't. 
really good at end of season finale. Yeah. But it was the end of the season thing, you know, and you thought to yourself, they better have some big ending thing here, you know what I mean? And they didn't, they just were eating pasta. How many people thought when they were eating the pasta that the guy who owned the restaurant was going to poison the pasta? Did you think that? See, it's only me. Something. The Sopranos, they got a way of working out stuff. I watch The Sopranos and then I put on the news. And you see all the fighting of Kosovo and mm -hmm. everything? You think they should let The Sopranos handle it. You know what I mean? Really? They send over two guys, things are done, no one says. You know what I mean? Exactly, it's all over. Enough said, no more problems, okay? <laughs> so horrible. I can't even discuss it that. Is. It's so horrible. Um, my, my daughter won't stop talking. I already told you that. Yeah. And my son. Why don't you hear this? It's so funny when your kids become, like, able to have conversations with you. Really? My son watches TV, and there's this one toy that he really wants, and I couldn't remember the name of it. So I wanted to call the Easter Bunny to see if the Easter Bunny wanted to bring it, and I couldn't remember the name. So I called him on the phone at home, and I'm like, Park, it's mom. He's like, yeah, I'm eating finger licking chicken. I'm like, great. Listen, <laughs> remember we were watching TV? Uh huh. And we saw that toy you wanted, and it changes from Batman into something else. Uh huh. He goes, what's the name? They go, Super Friends. I go, no, that's the show we were watching. He goes, yeah, let me think, let me think. Um, yeah, mom, that'd be Shapeshifters. And that's he, what it he was. Knew. He knew. Wow. I called like on a last chance. He's almost four, but I couldn't believe that he could remember the name. The name. Oh and my God. Isn't that weird? That's cool. It only means something to me, but it was a big moment in my journal. <laughs> Today, my son remembered shape shifters. That's right. <laughs> Made me cry. <laughs> Sally Jessie's still taunting me. Is she? Look what she sends me now. She sends me roof shingles. Okay, uh -huh. this is shingles from a roof. And she sends me this. I don't know even what this is, but this is what she says. Here's a roof and shingles, too. I can do anything better than you. Ooh. That's amazing. <laughs> Sally Jesse Raphael is an angry Dr. Seuss. That's what's happening. <laughs> She's like Dr. Seuss with an attitude. She's That's like telling right. me off in little poetry. She it's very is. nice of her. Oh my god. Kids Choice Awards, if you want to come and you're a kid between six and fifteen years old, uh, why don't you send a name, address? And uh, your whatever, because I don't have it all. Oh, here it is. A name and address and phone number, if you're 6 to 15, to the uh, Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Rosie Sweepstakes, P.O. Box 4805, Orlando, Florida, 32802. And you get to present at the Kids' Choice Awards on May 1st, Saturday, with me, your lovely host. We got presents for everyone today. The uh, Charles Fazzino people are giving everybody a T-shirt, a lovely pin, and lovely postcards. Again, Charles, thank you so much. And I can hardly wait because, you know, Star Wars coming out in May. Premiere Magazine has four collector's editions with different covers. See, there's Natalie, wow. there's George. Is that cutie patootie Ian McGregor? Um, all of these, uh, one of these are available to everyone in the audience. And when they come on the show, and they're coming in May, yeah. we're going to get them to sign these for you for eBay. Uh, that's that. All right. Did we get rid of everything? I did. Pretty much everything I had to do. Uh, we have a wonderful show. Juliana Margulies is here. <laughs> and a yodeling grandma, Ida May. Yeah. And from the practice, cutie patootie Steve Harris. <laughs> Don't go away. We'll be right back. years, we've all enjoyed our first guest in her award-winning role as Nurse Hathaway on ER. Quite frankly, I'm a little upset because I just learned she's leaving the show. <laughs> Not until after next season. Take a look at a scene from this week's episode. You know, three months ago, I was worried that I couldn't even get pregnant. And now, here I am, all alone. I wanted to have a baby with Doug. I, I don't want to be a single mother. <sighs> Do you have to be? I mean, have you spoken with Doug? I see all these pregnant women parading through here, lost, frightened, not knowing what to do. OK, and what do you tell them? I always say go with your gut, because most of the time it's right. So what does yours tell you? I don't know. Tells you to have the baby, please. Thank you. Please welcome Julietta Margulies. <laughs> Thank Lovely you. to see you look beautiful as always. Oh, thank you very much. How's life? Great. We're on hiatus, so I'm in heaven. 
Can I say something? Oh, I God, did one yeah. episode. I did one episode of Ally McBeal. Oh, you did? An hour-long drama like you do. Honestly, do not know how the actors do it. It's 14 hours a day. It's like six days a week. Yeah. It is exhausting. Yeah. So when I heard that you were going to leave, I thought, I can understand. It's so much work. <laughs> Thank no, it you. really is. It is so much work. Yeah, I mean, it's rewarding work, but it literally is your life. You don't have a life for nine months out of the year. Yeah, it's tiring. And it's, it's wonderful, but it's, you know, after six years, you got to move on. Yeah. Sometimes. But people are still upset. I was a little I'm angry sorry. when I first heard. Yeah. But what, how are they going to write you out? Please, nothing tragic. Like I can tell you. Like you better. <laughs> because we've got at least 42 more minutes, and we will wait, Juliana. We simply will. Well, the whole world knows that, that Hathaway's pregnant. Yes. With Doug Ross's baby. And he's going to come back. And he um, perhaps might come back. I episode? don't know. Yeah. They yeah. haven't written it yet. The yeah. writers are all on vacation, you know, trying not to think about us. But, um... But I think that, I think everyone will be happy. And I, I, it's already been announced by Scott Sasa, for some reason, that um, Hathaway's having twins. Which is exciting, so, isn't it? Yes, it is kind of exciting, except, you know, when we go back to work in July, I'm going to have, you know, these huge packs on and being twins. It's going to be a little exhausting. I'm going to get a weightlifting belt and try and support the back. <laughs> but think how much weight you can gain and nobody would know. This is Jim, but think about that. That's the first thing I thought of. You're going to have that big twin stomach on. Get a Sunday. Who cares, you know? Bring the Twinkies. Bring it the junk reality food. television. I'm going to, yeah, I should gain some few LBs for it. Sure. Now, but you've always been fit and trim, right? You've never really had a weight thing. Not really. No. I come from a good gene stock. My yeah. mother was a dancer, so God forbid anyone was, you know. Yeah, you were not a junk food like... family. Only health food. It was a real tragedy in my life because all I wanted was Frosted Flakes and, and actually my <laughs> at camp was when I realized that kids ate junk food. Yeah. I went away to camp the first time when I was 10 and they had Cheese Whiz, you know, cheese in a can that you put on a Ritz. Do I know it? I eat it frequently. Of course I know it. <laughs> it was such a phenomenon to me. I called home and I said, please, I gotta have Cheese Whiz. You gotta send me cheese in a can. And my father, who's vegetarian and healthy and, you know, only eats good food, said, uh, no daughter of mine eats cheese from a can. You'll get brie. Oh. <laughs> and wishbone Italian salad dressing was like as junky as we could get because I didn't like the dressing. But my stepmother was amazing. My stepmother used to, you know, she was always winning our hearts by sending us junk. And I never got cheese whiz because even for her that was a little disgusting. Right, right. But she would like slip in M&Ms with the granola, you know, underneath. Have you had it as an adult cheese whiz? Because it's pretty good, actually. I've never had cheese whiz. You've never had cheese no. whiz? You get yourself... Maybe a turkey dog. You don't eat hot dogs, do you? No. Do you eat turkey dogs? I, I eat turkey dogs, yeah. Right. I love turkey dogs. Get yourself a turkey dog and put the bun on the barbecue so it gets a little crunchy, and then do a strip of cheese whiz on each side. I'm telling you, Juliana, it's a fabulous treat. But does it melt? It melts a little bit. It gets a little bit gooey. You can twist the hot dog if you want so that there, it's an equal coating of cheese around the whole really? thing. I no, because if you just put a piece of cheese, it doesn't have a melt. But the whiz, it's already a little melted because it's in the can and all. It nicely, nicely really? coats. It's very okay, good. I'll try. I mean, I'm open. You know, I've yet to try a Twinkie or a, any in, of that stuff. In your whole life? My whole life, I've never had a Twinkie. <laughs> Honest to God? Honest to now, God. Now, are you at all curious about this? Well, you know, I, not really. I would taste one, but the thing about a Twinkie to me is, is when, it, when you squish it, it, it expands again. And I just worry about what that's doing to your body. <laughs> but so does angel food cake. Do you eat angel food cake? No. You don't. <laughs> now, you see, I've always wondered. I have some friends who have babies, and they don't let the babies have anything junky. And I always think that you're going to create the opposite. When the baby grows up, the baby's going to be like, you know, Jonesin for like a Hershey bar. You know what I mean? Well, yes, but my parents were really smart about it because we, there was no junk food in the house, but if we'd go out to dinner, we were allowed like, you know, uh, a cake or ice cream. Or, but it was always like haagen ice cream. And, and, you know, every now and then my mom would bring in... De I've had devil dogs. We were allowed yeah. like one box of devil dogs for the three of us for two weeks. That was the ration. <laughs> it's my comment about that. <laughs> my mother would go shopping on a Wednesday, and by Thursday morning, the devil dogs were gone. And I'm not even kidding you. I'm not kidding either. But she would let you eat that. I don't, know if, I don't know if let is the right word. <laughs> she would be in the other room. We would run and sneak them. Well, we used to try and sneak, but one, my sister and I actually Got honeycomb. You know honeycomb's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. Honeycomb's big. Oh, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not small. No, no, no. 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 Right. Honeycomb's got a, a big, big, big bite. bite. 
big, big taste in a big, big bite. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. I'm just saying, I know it. I know honeycomb. Well, mostly because we always had granola or familiar. Do you know familiar is like all, nope, it's no all clue. oatsy and raisiny and nutty. Anyway, my sisters and I, we were like, Mom, it's honeycomb. It's only made with honey. And somehow we talked her into buying it, and we went home and ate the whole box. And you know the honeycomb, you, you put it, you sort of stick it on the roof of your mouth with your tongue, and you let it dissolve. Oh yeah. And then you get sores all over your mouth. <laughs> and my, when we're all you going like this. Who, you kids whose mouths were not toughened by the edges of Captain Crunch, <laughs> you got sores on your mouth. But for me, honeycomb was nothing. Are you kidding? I could put a honeycomb uh, up there, no effect. Really? Oh, she was livid. She suddenly read the box. She's like, you ate the whole box. Oh my God, it's all sugar. Yeah. That was the last time we got honeycomb. Next time but... you come, bring me some of that familial stuff. I'm going to. Actually, it's good. It's really good. Did you ever have like Fruity Pebbles or anything? Oh God, no. You never had Fruity Pebbles? Never had Fruity Pebbles. I tried once to get Fruit Loops. And? I sneak them in and I didn't get them in the cart. But now you're a grown up. You go food shopping alone. Do you ever see the Cocoa Puffs and think, It's mm. as if, it's like, well, I appreciate it now, my upbringing, because I have a, I have, I don't, crave that stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't, yeah. every now and then it's great to have a thing of, I don't know, Frosted Flakes, but it, it's almost too sweet. It's too sweet. Yeah, but I love chocolate. I'm a Two huge chocolate lover. Two words I have lover. never said together. <laughs> <laughs> almost too sweet. It doesn't really work for me. Sadly, we'll get to go to a break and I'm just so, it's gonna distract me the rest of the show that you've never had a Twinkie. If we could find, a, there probably are some in my desk. If somebody can go in my desk, during the next segment, you will eat a Twinkie. They don't expire though, do they? They never expire, they never that's expire. what's great about them. You put them in a bomb shelter, you'll have them till the next millennium. Don't go away, Juliana Margulies will be come back. <laughs> Still ahead from the practice, Steve Harris. Juliana Margulies, who I understand you're coming to New York to do a play sometime in the near? Well, I'm scheduled to do a play in September of 2000, <laughs> but a lot of things can happen by then. Wow, you're really booking ahead, aren't you? <laughs> I'm trying. Your calendar must be full. Yeah, I'm trying. I miss, I miss theater. You know, my last experience with theater was, well, one of my last experiences on stage was I was doing The, the Lover, this Bomb and Gilead play. It's a great two-character play, and they switch characters. She, she's... The husband and wife keep switching characters, so they play each other's lovers, and then they change back into house wife and husband. And I had a lot of changes. Right. And, you know, I had to do them by myself, because I've never done expensive theater. I've always done cheap environmental theater. <laughs> right. So I didn't have anyone to help me change my costume. So I was backstage changing whatever, and then the last scene up is the sun comes up, and you see my back, and I'm looking at the, you know, sunset. And I'm just standing there, and I see the <laughs> lights come up, and I see my shadow is, like, huge and billowy. Yeah. And I realized my skirt is tucked into my stockings and I'm not wearing underwear. <laughs> and you don't have underwear! Oh my God, a total moon. Who wears underwear under your stockings? You know, it's like too many things. Well, if you're doing a play, I would assume well, you would. I didn't think the dress would be stuck, you know, so I, and I, I put the dress down and I couldn't turn around. I literally did the whole scene backwards. Like my husband comes in and I'm just, I could not turn to the did audience. Did you have friends in the audience? I had my, my entire family. My, really? My my godfather, my 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 dad, like every male, you know, my cousins. Oh, I couldn't look no. at them. I didn't come out. Did afterwards. they tease you? Did they tease you? My dad was very. He was like, "Honey, oh, it just looked like you know you were getting dressed." I'm like, and that was the night they videotaped it. Oh no! I do have it on video, but I didn't bring it. Would you next time? No. <laughs> come on, I want that uh, Fila and I want your Heine. Those are the two things I want next familiar. time. Whatever, familiar. I don't even I've never I'll even heard it. of it. I don't even think it. Where did you get it? It's it's in stores. The maybe health not, food maybe store. Maybe not in the stores you shop. Yeah, with. I don't believe there's a familial aisle of Grand Union. You know what I mean? I'm gonna go when I go to Grand Union this week. I'm gonna ask them. Do you have any familial? Familiar. Familiar, as in you it's are very fami familiar it's Swiss. to me? There's one with that's green and one that's red, one with apples and one's with raisins. Well, you know what? There's Captain Crunch and there's Captain Crunch with Crunch Berries. <laughs> there's two kinds of those, too, in case you're ever wondering. Excellent. That's okay. right. All right, now last time okay. you were here, you complained you didn't get to play a game. I love games. You love the game. I and I hear you're games. very good at charades. Uh, running charades is like the new thing to do. What's running charades? Running charades is the most, actually, they had an episode on Mad About You that showed running charades, I don't know. And Helen Hunt is amazing at it. You mean you have to run? Yeah, you have different teams of like 
we had 21 people over at my house, and there was like seven on each team, three teams. You right. have one person who's written out 10 titles of anything. Song, book, movie, TV show. Yeah. Not names, just not people's names, just titles. And then you have a person from each team come, they get the name, they run back to their team and have to hurry up, and whoever gets it runs back, and whoever gets through the 10, that team wins. So you're constantly running back oh. and forth, and it's not a party game like come in your beautiful cashmere sweater and your high heel boots, because you're little, you're schwitzing through the whole thing. My girlfriend had her cashmere sweater on. I'm like handing out tank tops. Really? And you take your shoes off and you just run. It's hilarious. See, I don't know if I'd be good at the running part, but I'd be very good. You'd at the be charades. good at the running part. How much running is there? Okay, that, about that much. So this is this is not for running. This is for our game. Now here's we play charades oh. too. Here's what we do. Okay. I'm going to take these. Um, these names that I have not seen that have to do with medicine <clears throat> or doctors or something, doctors, because you're on ER. Oh, and if you okay. get seven out of ten, the audience wins the Spa Da Da Home Relaxation Kit. <laughs> and I, okay, you put them on your head and, and I have you, to give you the clue. Right. Okay. And if you get seven out of ten, you'll get the tweet. Oh. <laughs> put them right there for you. Don't squeeze them. Don't squeeze them till later. It's something to look forward okay. to. Okay. Let me get it on my head first. <clears throat> You've got how many seconds? 60 seconds, Juliana. He's, Go. He's good with all the little animals. Dr. Little... Doolittle! Yes! Okay, she's really good with sex questions. Short. Dr. Ruth! Okay. Oh, God, he's my love above my life. Um, on the show. Ross! Uh, yeah, Dr. Uh, Ross! Yeah. Um, okay, um, um, he'll tell you what to do with all the little babies. He has all the books, and, and he writes about all the babies. What Dr. To... Spock! Yes. Um, you drink it, and it kind of tastes like Pepto-Bismol. Familial! No. Come on, you know. It tastes like Pepto-Bismol? It's not salt, it's... Pepper! Dr. Pepper! It doesn't taste like Pepto-Bismol, it tastes like Coke! Okay, um, Winter in Russia, um, Julie Christie, a uh, big epic film, you know. Winter in Russia. Dr. Cole, Dr. Freeze. Oh my Dr. God. <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna do the last part of the word. A um, hundred years ago. Right. Dr. Zhivago. <laughs> okay, um, um, he, 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 he puts people to sleep. He kills people. Kevorkian. Yeah. <laughs> the double pack. Here you go. Hold it. I want to be here for it. Oh. Cheers. <laughs> I want a large bite. A large bite. Oh, God. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> you swallow that. You swallow that. And I promise you I will taste the familial when you come on. Okay. Swallow it down the throat. Oh, my God, you could chew it for hours. <laughs> Into the tummy, is it not bad? It's not bad, actually. It's interesting, right? It's kind of tasty. You take another bite and I'll give you five bucks. All right! <laughs> Juliana Margulies, ER Thursdays, as you know, on NBC. a tape of our next guest from WMAR-TV in Baltimore, Maryland. And let me say, we were blown away by her amazing talent. Please welcome 67-year-old yodeling grandma, Ida May. <laughs> So happy and free There lives a guy who is waiting for me Out on the lake We'll drift with the tide And hear those chime bells ring Chime bells are ringing ho do lo ho tee Mockingbird singing ho do ho tee Sleep my little lovebird ho do ho tee Up on a summer's eve
that we were sent a tape of your performing? I did know that. Yes, I did. And your little granddaughter yeah. introduced you on yeah, the tape. She's responsible for my being here. She is. And she's here today. She said yeah. on the tape that yes. all she wanted was her grandma to be yeah. on the Rosie O'Donnell show. She said you were a bomb. I was a bomb. Yeah. I know. Is that a good thing? I said, what does that mean? That means she's wonderful. Oh, well, yeah. good. And you're a bomb, yeah. too. Oh, oh, thank you. There you go. Thank you. And we come to find out that you were a professional wrestler. Yes, I was proficient in judo and wrestling. Look at Ida here, professional wrestler. That's Ida over there. <laughs> Thank you. And that you were in the Wrestling Hall of Fame? Uh, well, um, not really. I don't want to think so. <laughs> well, didn't someone say no. you got some wrestling award? Well, or? yes, I have. I've won a lot of awards, uh, or I've been given a lot of awards uh, for my uh, professionalism and my success in different careers. I've had multiple careers. That's what they liked, I think. Well, here you were a pinup yeah. girl. Look oh, at you, yeah. Ida. Va, 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 boom. <laughs> what were you doing there? Modeling bathing yeah. suits? No, I was 19 years old. Yeah. And uh, it sold. I mean, we used to draw large crowds. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Where did you yeah. go? Did you just walk yeah. around in the bathing oh, suit? Oh, no, 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 no. No. <laughs> no. We, did. we wrestled in full bathing suits, which we had reinforced with uh, rubber. Uh, elastic bands around the, the legs and um, the hips. This was just and, a picture uh, to get this the people just, in. Oh, sure. Of course. Sure, it was yeah. a come on. <laughs> and now I understand you're in prison. Uh, I'm in prison, yeah. Yeah, that's sad. I call my family, I say, hey, I'm in jail. And, What'd uh, you do to get locked up? <clears throat> no, I'm a nurse. Oh, you're a nurse? Yes. A prison I, nurse. I take care of the guys in prison and they appreciate it, I think. Yeah. I Is that scary, them. that job? No, I'm not afraid at all. No. Never. I've never been afraid. They treat me with respect, and I respect them, too. And that's the only way to do it. Sure, because I'm not there to judge. Somebody else has judged them. I'm there to take care of their health, and that's what I tell them. You don't have to tell me what you did. Yeah, that's, so, uh, that's yeah, very sweet, yeah. very kind, and they get a little maternal yeah. nurturing from oh, you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Some of them call me mom. They do? <laughs> yeah. How'd you learn to yodel? Yeah. How old were you when you yodeled? Uh, I was 10, 12, and I learned to yodel. I listened to Roy Rogers. And I did it for several years. I visited um, VA hospitals and did some charity shows and country fairs. And then I didn't yodel again for 50 years. For 50, <laughs> yeah. You just took it up again? <clears throat> My girlfriend asked me in 97, Ida, can you still yodel? And I said, gee, I don't think so. But I tried it, and I, I thought, gee, I can still do that. And you do it yeah. well, Ida. Thank you. Ida May, thank it's you. lovely having you here. Oh, well, thank you very much. And thank come you. back whenever you like. I certainly will. From the practice up next, don't go away. Hey, our next guest can be seen every week fighting injustice and dominating the courtroom as Eugene on one of my favorite shows, The Practice. Take a look. Ten years I've been putting them back out there. Criminals, sometimes rapists, sometimes murderers. Ten years, all the time telling myself there's a reason. You're ten seconds from a contempt order. Do it! There are rules. Rules, damn it. We don't let the police coerce confessions. We don't let them beat down doors without warrants. We don't let them grill suspects after they ask for their lawyers. My client damn well asked for his lawyers, and all three of you sitting up there, you know it. You're out of order. You're out of order. And he went to jail, remember? He did. Please welcome back to the show, cutie for cutie. I'm doing well, very, very well. Uh, how y'all doing? Uh, I look good. You, you, you know, she called me Cutie Patootie. I early. did, yes. And what you need to know is, you call Michael Bartoluco Cutie Patootie. Exactly. Last year on the show. Yeah. And so I ridiculed him the entire year about the Cutie Patootie. <laughs> we had a little sign made up and put it on his door saying Cutie Patootie in blue. <laughs> and so they would call him like, five minutes to set, Cutie Patootie. <laughs> oh, no. Now I gotta get it. <laughs> That's killing me. Well, you're both cutie patooties. What could I tell you? Ah, uh, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. I'm you, ruined. I'm you're ruined. ruined. I'm ruined. I heard that you're the prankster on that set. Is that true? Yeah, uh, uh, to a degree, yeah, yeah. I, I got something for everybody. You know, uh, I know you love Cameron yeah. so much. And so uh, I, all the time, every time we do it, the money shot for Cameron is if she cries, she gets an Emmy. <laughs> 
So I tease her about that all the time. <laughs> and and if, if you've seen the show, you know Dylan and yeah. uh, the baby blue eyes. And if you've ever seen the show, there's there's never an episode we don't close up on those eyes right there. That's true. That's true. I know true. you ladies love that. So. Uh, and he always wears something that accentuates oh, the eyes. Oh, he always wears something blue that? or silver. They're killing me with that. But, I uh, know. I know. Well, we have the ball of the show. It's great. It's all in good fun. Uh, I know they tease me about things because I, I like to say a line and then I sort of like walk out. That's my key word. So every, so every time, you know, I'll say something, and then all of a sudden I'll be off the set, and nobody will know where to find me. And they tease me about my exit line, so. You mean every time you, is it written in the script? No. Exit left, you just make a big exit? No, I do that. I usually do it in rehearsal. I'll say, like, like he'll have a big thing to say to me, yeah. or something will be real intense, and we'll be real close. And, and, and right when I'm done, I'll get up and walk out. <laughs> and then he'll be like, <laughs> and I got him, you know, so that's about it. It's a great show. It really is. I love it so much. Thank you. And Thank you, you were on You were on a different show that you played the guy interrogating the cops. Oh, yeah. I, I, I did a guest a, show. I did a, actually, I did an episode of uh, Chicago Hope. That's right. Where, where I interrogated the, the, doctors, uh, the doctors. Right. Um, uh, and it was a great show. It was called uh, Lamb to Slaughter. And we did it, and we shot it. It was kind of funny because they hired me. The practice had just started out. And they actually hired me, as you know, David Kelly created that show as well. And they hired me because they had seen me on the show. And they said, well, we want you to do this, but we don't want you to be Eugene. We just want your kind of flavor for that. Right. And I, and I, I hadn't read the script. It was the first time. And they just described it for me. I came back, and all of a sudden, I had four days of straight work. And it was like, it was glorious. It, it turned out, I, I thought, to be a really uh, very cool episode. Yeah, and that was the first time I ever saw you. Had you done a lot of other work before? Oh yeah, I, I mean, I, I had done I had done television guest spots, never never um, a regular. I had also done uh, I did a movie called The Rock and uh, another one called Sugar Hill, and, and I had done many. I had done a few movies and a few television things and some commercials. You know, I got this great commercial. Uh, it was a Nutrigrain commercial a long time ago with this little bitty dog, and so I'm walking and I'm talking about. You know, me and this guy are walking, and we think we're talking about a girl. Oh, so I remember, remember that. that? Remember that? So, so we sitting there talking, and I'm complaining, I'm nagging, yeah, you're nagging. you saying, like, don't let her push you around. Yeah, don't yeah, let her... that whole bit. And then what happens is, at the end of the commercial, it comes down this little bitty puppy. And then I pick it up. You know, I'm not a small guy, and I pick up a little, and I'm making these little faces. And, mm. <laughs> oh, that's right. And uh, I get more love from that than anything I've ever been <laughs> on. You get so all the good. girls with that, I bet, uh, right? They're all falling in line. That's very nice. Thank you. Now, were you prepared for the kind of recognition that comes from a hit show like this? I mean, no, but it, it, people have been really gracious with me. I mean, they, they come up to me. It's kind of a ball. I, I like people, so it's no big deal. Right. And they come up and they really enjoy the show. A lot of the times, people don't know it's me though, oh, really? because I look bigger on, on television. You can't see you watching television, but I look I look bigger on television. No, it's true you do, because I was surprised. I thought you'd be a lot taller. Yeah, and that's what people. So they so they think so they'll come up to me and they say, you know, you know. You kind of look like somebody. Did you go to my high school? Right. And I get that. I get that every day. You don't yeah. understand. I get that every day. So, uh, so I say, no, I'm on this show called The Practice. And they go, ah! And, but you're so much bigger. And they give me I know, that. I know. I'm like, well, thank you. Thank you very much. You never know if it's an insult or a compliment. People come up to me in the, in the mall or whatever. They go, you Rosie O'Donnell? I go, yeah. They go, God, you look so much better in real life. Now, what does that mean? You look like crap that on TV? You, you know look real I mean? bad. Like, I, I think I'm a tall, fat dude on TV. I'm like, all right, cool, great. I'll take that. But then they see me in person, and it's lovable. I yeah. mean, it really is lovable. Yeah. So uh, people get very, very into the character, like me. Like when yeah. you almost lost your son, I was very upset about that. Oh, that was that was great. Uh, if if you haven't seen it, it has an episode where my ex-wife returns and she tries to get custody of my kid, uh, sole custody, and so we go into battle. And, and saying that he's a bad influence because he defends the drug dealers. Exactly, right? and uh, we we go into battle over the kid, and eventually what happens is that I I end up still sharing custody. But what was really very interesting was that on the street, guys would come up to me uh, after that show, and they would give me high fives, and they were happy as they could be that I had actually won my kid. And I was I was very surprised. By, I mean, so many so many young men would come up to me and, and say, "Great, I'm glad. I love the show, man. I'm glad you won your kid." And I was like. Well, thank you. That's cool. Exactly. That's me. I was very, was very upset by the whole thing. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna take a break. More with Steve Harris right after this. Don't go away. <laughs> it's true. Um, this uh, is a picture from the Golden Globes where you guys won. There it is. And how exciting was that for you guys? Oh, that was great. That was great. The best TV drama. It must be thrilling. It really must. Oh, it, it was wonderful. And it was a surprise, too. I mean, we, we were all sitting there, and we expected, we literally expected somebody else to win. And what happened, you know what the real thing is? I took my mom. 
uh, to the Emmys with me. Uh, hey, mama. And um, <laughs> so, so she's sitting next to me, and Michael Badalucco is here, and Lisa Gay and, and Kelly over here. So we're all sitting in this one row here. And then they announced that we, that we, uh, we won. And my mom is like 5'2", and she jumps up and makes this noise, like, ah! <laughs> and I, and I, I look over at her, <laughs> and I say, I say, thank you, Marla, I give her a kiss. And then me and Michael get up and we walk away, and I look at my mom, and she's brimming. I mean, her, Aww, it's like, isn't that sweet? and I melted. So I, then I ran up on the stage and got lost, and she got mad at me, because even in this picture, I'm like in the background, and she gets a little upset about that. Yeah, yeah, she wants you in the front and center. I'm too, I'm too big to be in the front. Look at that, we got to show the, the ladies. And you played football in college, is this true? Yes, it did. I, and I, I hear you had an interesting nickname. Mm -hmm. my, my nickname was uh, Smooth in college. Smooth. Where'd Smooth you get that from, Sweet Feet? Well, <laughs> 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 oh, that's better than Cutie Patootie. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take Sweet Feet. <laughs> I, I got Smooth, as you, as you know. Well, anyway, you know, I have no hair, so yeah. I'm, I'm bald. And uh, I, I really, uh, like, no hair in the arms, chest, nothing like that, so I don't have any hair. That's part of the reason, and the other reason we can't discuss it. Okay. <laughs> now, I've heard Love from Love me. From your guests. Please. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Love me, please. Please. All right. Thank you. I've heard from your cast members that you consider yourself a Scrabble expert. I am a Scrabble expert. Excuse me. I am a Scrabble expert. <laughs> Giving you an L right now. Giving you an L. Okay, very good. Here's some questions. Oh, no. I will ask you if this word is a real Scrabble word or not a Scrabble word. We'll see who this, is good. But this doesn't count, though. We don't have the board. <laughs> I'll play, though. I'll play. A I'll real play. Scrabble person would know the answers I'm to I'm a this. champion. My XI. Regular... Word or not? XI. XI, yes. Actually, you're correct. I know. That. Thank you. <sighs> J-U-P. Word? J-U-P. No. Correct. Hmm. <laughs> Q-A-T. Word or not? Q-A-T? Q-A-T. No, you. Q-A-T. Q-A-T. Yes. Yes, you're right, damn it. Um, oh! All right, S-U-Q. S-U-Q, word. Suck? S-U-Q. Uh, no. Yes, it is a word! Three out of four. That's How do I know that? Do you uh, have the computer, NetWords of Scrabble? No, I never play that. Okay, you gotta download NetWords. I'll tell you how to do it. I'll write it down. Okay. And then you can play Scrabble against the machine. And then you get all oh, different so you, words. Yeah, you play the computer, right? The yeah. whole deal. Yeah. So, yeah. Then I, I play my friends and kick their butts. Exactly. I, I just lost this weekend. Maybe I ought to take that up. Yeah, maybe you ought to play against me. <laughs> Steve, it's delightful to have you here. My pleasure. Sweet feet. You're not a cutie patootie anymore. And uh, we'll hope to see you again. The practice. Don't go away. We'll be right back.